Welcome to session three of Boot Camp, and I am so excited for you. I hope by now that you are getting really excited about being a um, skilled master consultant with Mary Kay, and that you've really dug into these trainings. You're not just um, getting the head knowledge, but you're actually experiencing um, the skincare clash where um, last week took the booking information to heart and you have a fully stacked day book and you have um, put yourself in a position that you can start to use this information to coach you. You know, your director's position is to coach you. The company pays her to coach you. She's already built a Mary Kay business successfully and so she's very well equipped for the company to pay her to do that with you. But you have to be in the activity so that the coaching that she gives you makes a difference and also for this information to make a difference. So I am uh, looking forward to um, just hearing that you have your date books full and if you don't, you know what, I may want to encourage you just to stop this right now, go back and re-listen to the booking CD and get yourself booked up because I think we established last week that everyone does have people to talk to um, that they haven't facialed yet. <clears throat> and um, there's enough suggestions out there to get you on your date book so that then you can um, start to make use of this pre-profiling and coaching information that we're going to go through right now. So the topic on this CD is going to be pre-profiling, coaching, and I do want to um, uh, tackle customer care on here too. I want to give you a little perspective on coaching the hostess and pre-profiling the guest because I um, remember very clearly, you know, being a consultant and a director, booking classes, and it was all about more bookings, more bookings. I either had a book or hold, you know, that the whole focus was on getting more bookings, booking, 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 or holding the class. And really the perspective in my mind was I need more bookings and my money's made holding the class. And something that I've found over time that helped me um, value the time or being willing to invest the time in pre-profiling and coaching more is this. If you sell $200 of a skincare class, Really, I mean, I was just thinking that I made $100 for my time at that class. And so I wasn't taking into consideration, you know, the time invested into booking, coaching the hostess, etc. What I did find also is that classes that I had a guest list for and I had pre-profiled the guest had a much higher holding rate than if I did not have a guest list because what I've come to find is that if she can't give me a guest list, she doesn't have a guest list. So I have found that if I have a guest list and a pre-profiled, my percentages of holding the class increase dramatically, like dramatically. I, I don't know what the percentages are, but um, huge difference in holding. So what I've come to um, realize is that that $100 profit from a $200 class is... Um, not really for all for holding the class. Let's break that $100 profit down. I think you probably make $10 to book the class. You know, in the beginning of your booking efforts, you may think that you make more than that because booking may seem like it's, um, you know, the most intimidating or harder thing in your business. But hopefully the training that you got last week, you know, when you break it apart, you need like five booking dialogues for those five different scenarios. You need, um, there's five different avenues of leads coming in. That's 10 things, you guys. Most jobs that offer you a six-figure income opportunity have more than 10 things you have to master, 10 dialogues that you have to master and get comfortable with. So I am fully confident that you are going to be able to master those. So you get, of that $100 profit, you've earned $10 of it for booking the appointment. You earn $20 of it, I believe, to coach the hostess. You earn another $20 of it to pre-profile. So 50% of that profit that you earned, $50 of the 100 You've earned from booking, coaching the hostess, and pre-profiling. Then I think you earn about $10 of the 100 to present the class and close it. I think you earn another 20 
dollars of it to play deal or no deal and the name game because that is um, where you get your future bookings um, and your leads. Remember those, the second and third avenues that are non-negotiable of getting leads into your business that we're going to cover on the next um, segment of boot camp, which is going to be the skincare class procedure itself. And then you make another $20 for your individual table and individual clothes. That'll actually be the last session of boot camp. So you're making um, really only half of the money that you made is made there at the class. The other half is made prior to getting to the class. So I think if I would have looked at things from this perspective, I would have been willing to invest more time in coaching my hostess and pre-profiling my guest. Looking back, I would have been better off to have less bookings and have them pre-profiled than have more and have a higher cancellation rate. So let's dig right in to pre-profiling and coaching. This is something that I think, um, like the four-point recruiting plan, um, you're going to hear me share. I think that has become, um, was at risk of becoming a lost art. <laughs> Mary Kay, pre-profiling, I see once we launched TimeWise Skincare, um, especially when we had just one formula of TimeWise Skincare, and consultants um, felt like they could go to a class and just squirt that out for everyone on a tray, and you didn't have to um, pre-profile to figure out what their skin type was, to figure out which cleanser, which toner, which mask, which moisturizer which foundation they needed, I think people stopped pre-profiling. And that is dangerous because pre-profiling, granted, does help you be more prepared for your customer skincare formulas, but I think there's other um, purposes of pre-profiling that are far more important than their skincare formulas. Um, for instance, I th I've already shared with you, I think if you've been in contact with the guest coming to a class, there's a much higher likelihood that they're going to show up. Because you guys think about it, in most other direct selling businesses, party plan businesses, which I don't put us in the category of a party plan. We are in direct selling, which that means that we do not sell in retail stores, but we are not a party plan. A party plan business is the uh, type of situation that the hostess invites as many people as she can, maybe the consultant sends invites, maybe the hostess does, and they are basically just looking for as many people to show up and place orders as possible. It's a party plan, and you know there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not how Mary Kay set up Mary Kay Cosmetics. Mary Kay set this up to be the finest teaching-oriented skincare company in the country and then in the world. And so once we accomplished that, then our focus um, went to enriching women's lives in the United States and around the world. But we teach skincare. Women are coming to this appointment to learn about skincare, but they only know that they're coming to learn about skincare if you educate them that that's what they're coming to. Otherwise, if they've never been to a Mary Kay class before, they could very easily assume, based on how the invitation is made, that they're coming to a party plan. And it's all about just coming um, and buying something, basically. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't know about you guys, I never liked that obligatory buy feel. And so that's <laughs> probably why I can pull this training apart for you so um, in such minute detail is because honestly, I don't, I don't like when I'm invited to a party plan type party because it's assumed that you, if you're, if you get the invitation, it used to be if you showed up, you needed to buy something that was just expected. But now with evites, et cetera, if you get invited and can't go, you're still kind of expected to buy something. There's an expectation there because you can order online. So it's like, you don't, you're kind of afraid to even look at your email. It's like, I don't, la, 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 I don't even want to see an invite because, I mean, then you're forced into the obligatory buy. And I, you know, Mary Kay always taught us women love to buy, but they don't like to be sold. And I feel very sold something in those situations. And so I guess I never 
want another woman to feel like that. I mean, I really want women to want what they're buying. Like, you know, they're not doing me a favor to buy it. They're not doing the hostess a favor. They're purchasing, making that purchase be, just like they go and make pay for their hair or their nails done. When I go and get my hair done, I don't sit there and leave and feel like, gosh, she just sold me something or I just bought something. Like, I'm excited. She provided a service and a product for me that I desired and needed and wanted and I'm, you know, totally satisfied when I leave. I don't feel sold anything. That's how I want someone to leave a Mary Kay class. But they... I want them to come in with that expectation also that they're there to learn something. There's something in it for them. I think that is congruent with, you know, Mary Kay's teaching to us that everyone has a sign around their neck that says, make me feel important. So when we go to a class, I, you know, I remember Mary Kay telling me from her own mouth that you do not go to a class with dollar signs around, you know, people's necks, that you're not going in there to make a certain amount of money. You are going there with the purpose of how can I help that woman feel better about um, how she looks, how she takes care of herself, how she takes care of her skin, how she applies her makeup. How can I help that person? And really ministering to that woman, encouraging her, helping her. Obviously, if our product meets a need for her, which we're educating her about needs that she may not even know that she has with skin care, then she's going to decide that she wants to buy the product from you and, and be your customer, but you didn't go in with the purpose of selling. Selling is the end result of you effectively teaching and educating about needs and then, you know, correctly helping them match up product with needs. So um, that I think, you know, setting up a class pre-profiling for them to come because there's something in it for them is congruent to what Mary Kay um, taught us about everyone having a sign around their neck saying, make me feel important. So with pre-profiling, you are um, coaching, you're helping the hostess get what she wants. Pre-profiling, you're helping the uh, prospective customers and the guest realize that they are coming to something different than just helping their sister-in-law get hostess credit or helping their neighbor that came to her, you know, la-la-la party the week before, you know, it's a payback. You know, you have to come to their party because I came to yours type of thing. Um, with pre-profiling um, and coaching the hostess, something that um, I have found, remember we were talking about getting leads from, you know, five different avenues. One, you know, people that you meet out in everyday um, life, you know, that you'll see repetitively or not repetitively. Two, uh, names that you get from people at classes, bookings from bookings, and then the fourth and fifth were really like sea leads, like um, the facial boxes or restaurant promotions or daycare promotions or gym promotions or collecting cell phone promotions, etc. cetera. Um, when you're working with sea leads, something that I have um, heard from my consultants and I um, do agree with is that if someone is winning something out of a um, facial box, for instance, you know, people registered to win a $50 gift basket or a dozen bagels from the bagel shop where you have the facial box. When you call that woman to say she won, because everyone wins, you know, one person wins the grand prize, and then I would give everyone a runner-up prize, $10 in product with a complimentary Mary Kay makeover. These are the times that are available, blank or blank. When you schedule that, then... Um, remember when we were talking about the booking dialogues, I suggested um, scheduling the appointment with her first and then suggesting, you know what, if you want to invite a couple friends to join you, I can give you, you know, if you started off with a $10 gift certificate, I'd give her 20 for having a couple friends join her. Something that I have found is that pre-profiling those people when you're booking someone that you have never sat down with may not be a good idea. 
because what that does is you you haven't met this person and you're setting up an appointment with her. You're asking her to have a couple friends join her and then you're asking for those friends names and numbers. I think that increases your likelihood that you're not even going to have that appointment because I think it kind of um, smells of the bait and switch type. I think that person's like, oh, I won something, but now I'm a hostess. It's turning into a class. I think that, you know, at first you're telling her she's winning something, and so it's all about her, and then now all of a sudden it's turning into, again, a class, a big deal, you know, a bigger deal than her just winning something and, and having this complimentary makeover, which is fun. So what I'm finding is that with C leads, pre-profiling, is something that you probably aren't going to be doing. What I'm describing to you, this pre-profiling and coaching the hostess, is when you're booking a class from a class, or you have someone at a skincare class that schedules her um, checkup facial, and then she invites some friends, then you're pre-profiling the guests because she's been pre-profiled. She understands how this works. If someone hosts a class and she invites people to come to her class, that's different than someone who just got a one, you know, a, won something from this lady that she doesn't even know that just called her that's from Mary Kay and told her she could have a couple friends join her. In that case, I would keep it light and fun and be prepared for, you know, how many people she'll have coming, knowing it may just be her, but it may be, you know, three, four, five six people. So um, that way then once you do the appointment with them, then you can um, go into the pre-profiling and the um, coaching the hostess that I am teaching you here. Um, pre-profiling, I if you're making $20 of the 100, so 20% of your $100 profit in pre-profiling the guest, you know, that that's important. You know, would you just throw $20 of every 100 away for a class? Also, too, as we talked about in the booking segment, if you have not talked to the guest in a traditional type class setting, not the one that we just talked about with the C-Lead, a traditional type class setting, um, if you have not gotten a guest list from the hostess, it means that she doesn't have a guest list, <laughs> is what I found. If you haven't talked to the guest at the class, then you don't count that as a class, not until it's pre-profiled. So when I say count, that means if you need so many classes on your books, you know, say you want to earn a car, so you know you have to hold 30 faces in a month. So if you're figuring that you need to hold 10 classes of three or five classes of six, you have to book double to hold that. So you don't count it as one of those bookings that you need, you know, prior to your cancellation rate. Um, so if you want to hold five, you're booking 10. You don't count it as one of those 10 until you pre-profile the guest. Um, with the pre-profiling of the guest, um, part of that is there's a conversation on my unit net site, my website, under skincare class, and then it'll be under pre-profiling and coaching. Um, there's a whole dialogue. There is um, in on in touch dialogues also to look up. The dialogue that's on my unit net site is what I have used for years and what I recommend that my consultants use. Um, couple of things it is or is not. I do not recommend that you read all the questions on the profile card on your conversation because what I have found is by the time you get to the you know third or fourth option for the answer they've forgotten what the question is and as far as the products go there's a couple questions you can ask about the skin and you can figure out what they need um, to use at the initial skincare class. As far as additional supplements and more specific information, when they fill out the profile card at the skincare class, you then can flip up that, you know, white sheet that's on top of the pink sheet on the profile card and it specifies, oh, you could recommend to that customer um, targeted action line reduction or even skin essence, etc., cetera, et cetera. So, you know, with um, the pre-profiling conversation, there's a couple key things that happen in that dialogue. One is you connect with the person. 
and talk to her so you start to establish a relationship with this person and you're a real live person that she's going to get to meet at her skincare class the next week versus again her just showing up for a party plan thing and it's all about just buying something versus starting a relationship with that consultant that will be ongoing. Most other party plans, I mean, you'll buy from random different people. It's not set up um, to have the loyalty to one consultant for that consultant to build a repetitive customer base like it is in Mary Kay. So you start that relationship um, in the pre-profiling conversation. You also are establishing that this is not a party plan, just show up and buy something type of thing. You're asking questions so that she understands there's something in it for her. And the questions about, you know, skincare, I want to find out, you know, what do you currently use on your skin? And again, you don't have to jot these down. You can go onto my website and pull off the pre-profiling conversation to use with all the guests because I'm paraphrasing some of this. But I want you guys to understand why your pre-profiling. What is the purpose of this? Because then the questions that you're asking are going to make a lot more sense. What are you currently using? You know, I want to find out, am I going in, you know, is this a soap and water girl? Is this someone who, you know, really is into skincare? Have you ever tried Mary Kay before? I want to find that out before I go to the class. I mean, I don't want to get to a class and have someone tell me, oh, I tried Mary Kay, it was horrible, I broke out, um, or I was allergic to it. You know, that's an awesome thing to find out when she tells you in front of everyone before the class starts. I mean, that I'd rather hear that on the phone with her so I can find out, you know, share with me, what do you mean you had an allergic reaction? You know, sometimes they're financially allergic. Sometimes they had red bumps all over their face immediately, which is an allergic reaction. But you don't know what formula it was. You know, some people when they break out um, with uh, their skin breaks out after they use it for a while, they'll call that an allergic reaction. They may just have, you know, really sensitive skin and or they may have used the wrong formulas. Because honestly, you guys, I have um, oily, super acne prone skin. And if I used any other formula than the exact ones that I do, I will break out. Within two weeks, I will have cystic acne. So she may have had the wrong formula, too. So I want to find out, what has been your experience with Mary Kay before? Great. Okay, tell me about your skin. Is it more dry normal, combination oily? The answer to that question tells me what time-wise formula she would use. And then, you know, what is your biggest concern with your skin right now? And then she's going to tell you, you know, oh, puffy eyes, or I break out, or oiliness, or extreme um, dry, etc. That, that's going to help me, again, fine-tune her, the time-wise choice, but also, you know, be um, prepared to make recommendations for supplements for her. So, um, and also, too, if she says, well, I really want to come and learn about eyeshadow application. That's a great opportunity. If they start asking color questions, you can say, you know what, at the um, skincare class, we're going to focus on skincare because that's the basis to make your color look really great. And then what I'll do is at your appointment, we'll set up a time to get together to do your advanced color appointment. Actually, I'm going early to do Elaine's appointment prior to you getting there. So you're going to get to see how her mineral powder color looks. Um, and we can decide if we want to do, um, you know, what look we want to um, do for you. We can do a virtual makeover online. You can pick out a color 101 look. Um, at your class, we're just going to do a really quick summer dash out the door look or two-minute makeover look. Whatever you guys do at your skincare class. You know, do you do the, some people do the traditional, they just reapply their cheeks and lips from a color card and they take home the eyes to do there. Some people are doing dash out the door looks with the cream to powder icicles, you know, the cream and the bronze and then a bronzing powder and lip gloss. Um, Etc. The two-minute look that was just featured in Applause magazine for summer. You can pick. You know, you know what you're offering the guest, the class. So, um, if she starts to ask color questions, though, you can tell her. You know, let her know that this is a skincare class because then you don't have people coming to do a color class, and then you tell them, oh, no, you can't do color, we're doing skincare when they get there, and then they're not really happy about it. That, you know, makes for an uncomfortable situation for you, for them, for the hostess. Um, so I, the pre-profiling, it helps to set up what the expectations are, you know, for the guest. Um, I also want to say, so, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. This you're going to hear in our um, fifth 
um, boot camp session on the four-part recruiting plan, you're starting to gather information from the people about what they do and, you know, who they are, who are these people coming, because then that helps you be more effective in your four-point recruiting skills, which we're going to pull apart on CD5. Um, so pre-profiling, you also are going to tell her, you know, Elaine has reservations for four people, and you're one of them, and so if you can do me a favor, and if something changes and you're not going to be able to attend, will, ju will you just give her a 48-hour notice? Can I count on you for that? You guys, that... You know, starting a relationship, finding a little bit about them, finding out what their skincare needs are, letting them know that she has reservations. Can you see how that is setting up a different expectation um, in a totally different situation than a party plan that an invitation has been sent and the people are planning on coming over, looking through a brochure, and ordering something? You know, I, I did a couple classes where people came in, said, oh, I got to go and take, you know, Johnny to soccer. Let me just look through a book and order something. I, I hated how that felt. I'm like, I, you know, I don't want her just to buy something. I mean, really, I don't want that, you know, obligatory buy that she's just buying something and I'm probably never going to see her again and that's her opinion to Mary Kay. I would rather have four women there that want to be there to learn about taking care of their skin and that there's something in it for them versus 20 people there that are just coming to make an obligatory party plan buy. Also, too, you're going to find that um, you have a higher holding rate for classes because obviously if guests are showing up, a hostess is going to hold a class. And, you know, if our business is enriching women's lives, I've done enough classes where, you know, guests don't show up because, you know, I, I didn't profile them because of whatever reason. And the hostess is so disappointed. You know, she's just, you know, takes that to heart and it's like, um, you know, really a disappointing thing to her. It's one thing if you've pre-profiled and her friends don't show up and she's disappointed. You know, you haven't set that situation up. But if you didn't do your job and didn't pre-profile and her people don't show up and she's disappointed, you've set her up to feel like that and that's not okay. You know, we're, we're in the enriching women's lives business, and that was not a setup to enrich her and encourage her. So we have to make sure that we are doing everything possible to help that hostess have a great class. Obviously, if the people still don't show up, then, you know, there's nothing that we can do about it, and maybe she needs to come into Mary Kay and meet some new friends. So also, I have found that your um, rate of people showing up when you pre-profile is a lot higher because there's something in it for them. You know, just picture, you know, we think that people coming to a skincare class is the most important thing on their schedule that day because it's important to us. And maybe the most important thing on your schedule that day, depending on what your goals are and if you're doing your Mary Kay business to pay bills. But thinking about it, I mean, that woman may have gone to work, come home, you know, kids are fussy, dinner to be made, husband's saying, why are you going out, you know, etc. And if she's going because there's something in it for her, there's a lot higher likelihood that she's going to go versus just going to help her neighbor with hostess credit. You know, it's a lot more likely that she's going to bail out because that neighbor may have bailed out on her earlier, or sister-in-law's bailed out on her on something else, and so she's like, oh, it's not a big deal. Um, whereas if she's going, like, to her home, if it's something in it for her, it's more like a nail appointment or a hair appointment. You know, those of you who get your nails done, or, you know, women, I mean, the woman I know, and I think you know, and you are, we take our hair appointments seriously. Like, we just don't not show up for our hair appointment. Um, so I want it set up so that she's going to it like it's her nail or hair appointment that increases the likelihood of the people showing up. Um, so on unit net, I want you to pull up that pre-profiling conversation to have with the people. Um, if you don't get the people, I, I think that it's totally okay to leave a voicemail. Um, hi, Elaine. This is Dawn Otten Sweeney with Mary Kay Cosmetics. I just wanted to touch base with you. I have a reservation for you next Wednesday at 7. 
for Tanya's uh, Mary Kay skincare class. I am really excited to meet you. You know what? You can leave me a voicemail back. This is my phone number. Or, you know, you can text me back. You guys, people like to text. It's fast. It's easy. Give them your cell phone number. I just want to know, is your skin more dry, normal, combination oily? And what are you most concerned about with your skin right now? Those are the two things, you know. You want to make it short and sweet. Just say, I am super excited to meet you. If you'll just leave me this information on my voicemail sometime in the next 24 hours, that would be excellent. Um, see you then. Any other questions, let me know. That's the voicemail I leave for the pre-profiling. Um, for the hostess now, um, she knows that you're going to be pre-profiling her guest. It's really critical. I mean, the... Coaching the hostess actually starts prior to, you know, her class. It started, you know, at the class she was at. So you're going to have some hostesses who they've never been at a class. You're going to have some hostesses who have been at classes. The hostesses that are easiest to coach are the ones that have been at skincare classes. And that's why getting yourself into skincare classes with A and B leads as soon as you can um, makes building your business so much easier because coaching a hostess who's already been at a class is easy. Coaching a hostess who hasn't isn't as easy and it's more time consuming. But once you spend the time to get a prototype skincare class set up, which is what the boot camp is trying to do, is to teach you, like, what's the prototype? What does a perfect scenario look like? Like the skincare class DVD that the skin the company gives you, that is a prototype skincare class. You know, that is the bar from which we're working. And we'll, we'll add some things on to that as you get more proficient, but that's the base minimum that you want to be working with. So if a um, hostess, whether she was at another class or at um, the, um, if she's at another class, you're actually going to have a guest list that has been started at the class. So um, for instance, when you play the name game, you know, on the DVD, how they talk about the name game, you play that to get um, names and numbers for referrals. What I suggest doing is that you play the name game after you've played Deal or No Deal, and again, in skincare procedure, the next um, session, we're going to pull apart. Deal or No Deal is a way of getting bookings from your bookings. And so um, after you've done that, so you do your skincare class, they try the skincare, you know, they, um, you play Deal or No Deal, then you do the name game, and then you close out, the, do the table close, and then the individual close. Um, the name game, if people have taken the deal, if they've booked a class, you know, taken an envelope to book a, a have some friends join them for their advanced color appointment, um, during the name game section, you know, turn over your profile cards and you'll see on the right hand top section there's a name for names and phone numbers. If you took the deal, I want you to jot down the names and phone numbers of the people that you want to invite to join you. If you didn't take the deal, what I want you to do is I want you to jot down the names and numbers of some friends that you'd like to give a $10 Mary Kay pampering um, session to. And so how that's going to work is I'm going to call them and tell them that you are at a Mary Kay skincare class with me and they gave you a $10 gift certificate to be redeemed with your summer pampering session. So this doesn't cost you anything, but you get to give a gift to a friend if you want to specify what the reason is. You know, is it a birthday? Did she get a promotion? Did she have a baby? You know, if there's something you want me to specify, I'm more than happy to do that. But she's going to get to use that $10 in product on whatever she wants when she has her makeover. So those are the names and numbers. So pull out your cell phone and um, let's take one minute to do that. Great. So if she's a hostess, you already have those names. If she was not at a class, you don't have the names. So that's the first thing you want to do. You set the date, the time. You, if she says, well, I'd like to have the class at 7, then I would ask her, do you want, so you want your guests to come at 7? And so then I would come at like 6.15 to set the class up and do your advanced color appointment. Or do you want me to come to your house at 7 and then have your guests come like at 7.30, 7.45 um, to do skin care, but prior me and you will do your advanced color. So you set the date, the time, um, get, you know, set up for her to do her advanced color appointment. 
if she's been at a class, she's already on skincare. If she's not on skincare, hasn't been to a class, or isn't currently using the skincare, I would highly recommend that you give her foil packs of the Time Wise skincare, or you've squirted skincare into the tray and given it to her to use for two or three days prior to the class. So that when you get there, if she's already using skincare, she has her foundation on, you can go right into the color appointment. If she hasn't, then she can use the skincare for a couple days. You just match her up with foundation when you get there. But I want her to have used the skincare for as much time as possible prior to her class because then she's already started to see a difference in her skin. So a lot of times her friends can already see a difference in her skin and she's talking about how fast and easy and how quickly she's getting results. She sells skincare for you. You know, they expect you to sell skincare. You're the skincare consultant. You're the salesperson to them. But I want her to sell the skincare for me. So I want that hostess to have an advanced color appointment prior to a guest getting there. Um, I want her to um, have used the skincare prior to me getting there. Um, also, too, you want to find out what does she want. You know, obviously, if she's at a skincare class, then you know what she didn't purchase, um, what she prefers. If she wasn't, then just ask her, you know, what would you like to have at this, you know, to get from your class? You know, would you like to get you know, free product, or do you want to get a discount on product, or a gift? You know, what what sounds good to you? You guys, you can be flexible with hostess credit. You know, just just to give you an idea outside the box, I remember Daylene White sharing um, that one of her best hostesses that she had over the years, you know, the woman would say, okay, I like um, a blender. And so Daylene would go to the store, find out how much a blender cost, and then figure out what had to be sold at the class, you know, just using the company's traditional hostess credit. You get 10% of the sales in product for um, no bookings, 15% for one booking, 20% for two or more bookings, and that's how much she'd give her to use towards the appliances. And Daylene would say, okay, if this blender is $30, then... You know, we need to have blank amount of sales and blank amount of um, bookings for you to get that. And she goes, I furnished this lady's whole kitchen. You know, I remember, like, you know, she'd buy her an iron, a crock pot, whatever the lady wanted. So, you know, just to allow you to think outside the box, you are seeing on our hostess brochures more focus towards product versus gifts. Um, you know, you can still get some gifts on Section 2, the roll-up bag, I think brush sets, the light makeup mirror, cosmetic bags, those are nice gifts. But first and foremost, you want people on products, and there are so many products that you can get people on. I mean, outside of the Miracle Set, and then Microderm, and all the other supplements, and then additional color looks, and sunscreen products, spa products, body care products, gifts, etc. You know, really... Um, the products are what you want to keep the focus on first and foremost, but, you know, ask the hostess, what does she want? And then you want to decide. Remember how last um, session we were deciding on those booking dialogues and, you know, the getting leads methods? Same thing with hostess credit. You can go in your showcase and in your consultant's guide, obviously, um, you have training and resources to do the traditional company's hostess credit. That works great. You know, people build their whole business on that. There are tons of other hostess credits available. On my website, under skincare class, under hostess credit, tons of ideas. Something that we use a lot are the SHOT show, S-H-O-T. S means you have six people present. H means you hold on the originally scheduled date. O means you have $100 in outside orders. T means you get two bookings. When you do the SHOT show, you get $100 of free product. You know, it's $25 for each of those four categories. So maybe if they do three out of four, they could get $75 of product. But um, six people present, hold on the originally scheduled date, $100 in outside orders, and two bookings, the $100 in outside orders would cover you know, that's a break even then. But if you have six people there, you guys, I mean, unless you're working outside the target market, you are going to have enough sales to justify that. I like the SHOT Show because I think if you're working in the target market and you have sharp, 
professional, busy women, whether they're professional being full-time homemakers or working outside their home or a combination of both, for $100 in product, I would find the time to do it, even though I've never been a party plan person. $100 is a lot of product. So the SHOT Show we use a lot, 75 for 35 you hear with the company. Um, and you'll see um, that on the website. Half off, you know, a 10% discount for every person they have joined them. The point of this is pick out what you're going to use. And if you don't understand it, you know, when people say, oh, I don't really understand the 75 for 35, how does that work? Then you don't need to use that for hostess credit. Because if I have to explain it to you, you don't you don't own that. You don't understand that. You're not, you can't pass it on. What can you get excited about? What can you use? You guys, I always, I built my whole business on the 10% off for each person that was there. She had, you know, five people there that were over 18 and non-Mary Kay users. She would get a half off shopping spree. I, to me, that was easy to explain. It wasn't based on the amount of sales, the amount of bookings. I figured that was my job. If you put people in front of me, if they like the products, I'm going to sell it to them, and I can get bookings from them. So I figured that was my job. I just wanted her to get the people there. And for a half-off shopping spree, you know, I don't know about you, but when I go into a store, if a rack says half-off, I buzz right there. I understand 50% off. So I like that. I mean, obviously I like it. I can explain it to you with enthusiasm 20 years after, you know, I used it on a regular basis. But, um, so I knew that's what I always did. I didn't have to think, okay, what hostess credit should I offer her? So I want you to pick a hostess credit and just use it. And then, you know, if you need to change it, change it. But, you know, I don't care if someone comes to a success meeting and says, oh my gosh, I had a $5,000 skincare class and it's because of this hostess credit. It. Again, I see consultants change their booking dialogue, change their hostess credit program so much that they never get to the point that they own it. They never get to the point that they, you know, can move on and not have to worry about what hostess credit they're using. So pick a method that you're going to use and use it through a power start. And then at the end of the power start, if you need to tweak it or change it, go ahead for the next one. But once you find one that works, I'm going to encourage you to hold on to that and not change it. If something's not broken, do not fix it. So you pick your hostess credit, um, have hostess packets put together and ready on my website. There's suggestions for a hostess packet. They can be elaborate. They can be basic. I mean, I'm a basic type prop person, so I do the minimum amount of props as possible because then there's the least amount likelihood that I'm not going to have something or it's not going to look great. Some people have these elaborate, oh my gosh, I'm so impressed with their hostess packets. Mine literally would be the hostess credit flyer, a piece of company information, um, it would be my, um, a lookbook and copies of, or uh, sales tickets if outside orders are part of the hostess credit, and um, the dialogue to invite her guest. So the dialogue to invite her guest is something in the company's hostess booklet, there's a dialogue for her to use. The dialogue that you're going to find on my UnitNet site, I'm going to encourage you to pull up and look at because it takes that conversation full circle. Just like with you guys, you know, I'm recommending that you use the dialogue until you own it and then you tweak it. You're going to do the skincare class exactly like the flip chart says, and then you can add on, you know, once you start to get company average results. With the hostess, if we don't give her a dialogue to invite her guest, she's doing things like, oh, hey, Jennifer, I'm having a Mary Kay lady come over, and you don't have to buy anything, but remember, I came to your class, so you owe me. You know, or come over, bring the kids, you know, they can play, and I have this Mary Kay lady coming over. You guys, you got to script her, because if you don't script her, she that's what she's saying. So either Either we're setting her up to be frustrated and disappointed, or you're setting yourself up to be frustrated and disappointed. Also, too, again, since I've never loved going out warm booking, when I got a hostess, I wanted to make, the, make sure all of her contacts were taken full circle. What I mean by that is this, that when she calls a friend, if that friend can't come, then 
if you haven't given her additional dialogue, then it's just left at that. That friend can't come. You may never meet that friend. Your paths may not cross again. But that friend may not, you know, it may be that she has a consultant or she doesn't want to come, but it may be that she has a legitimate excuse. Her son has a band concert, and so she can't come to the class. She'd like to have a facial, but she just can't come at that time. But if you don't give the hostess additional dialoguing, you know, she's just not going to naturally think, oh, well, could I give her your name and number, or do you need anything? She's not going to think of that. I mean, she hasn't been coached to think of that. Your job in coaching the hostess is to give her the dialogue, so a dialogue to invite the guest. If the guest says yes, great, you get the name and number, and then you get to pre-profile her. If the guest says, no, I can't come, then the scripting suggests that the hostess say, would it be... Um, okay, if the consultant called you to have a facial sometime, okay, great. If she says yes, you get the name and number, and you get to call her. If um, she says, well, no, you know, th that's not okay. No, I'm not interested. Just say, is there anything that you want? You know, you can go on to my consultant's website and shop. That still helps towards my hostess credit. Great. If she does that, you get an outside order, you still have a contact and a new customer. So I, you want to script the hostess so that she has the um, dialoguing to invite the guest. And then um, when you get there, hosting or coaching the hostess still continues on. When you get to the class itself, when you get into her home, you want to have a conversation about, you know, where the class is going to be held, where you're going to do your individual consultations, if she has snacks, if she could serve those while you're doing individual consultations, if there's going to be kids there, you know, can you give someone to help out, you know, with child care? That's a great thing to find out prior to the class. Give a babysitter lip gloss to keep all the kids in the basement during the class, etc. Um, so coaching the hostess and pre-profiling the guest, again, you're making 40 of your $100 profit, $40. 40% of your profit from a, a $200 class is coming from coaching the hostess and pre-profiling the guest. So I'm hoping that that gave you some, um, you know, really helpful um, tips on coaching and pre-profiling. Um, again, your assignments for this portion are to go on to my website to print off pre-profiling the guest dialogue and coach the hostess um, dialogue to say to her guest, that's something you'd print off to have in her hostess packets. Take a look at, I want you to put together hostess packets. You don't wait until you have a class booked. So how many classes are you going to hold in the next, you know, 20, in the next um, 30 days? If you, you know, commit it to a power start, then, you know, you need what? It, you might as well put 20, 30, 40 packets together all at once um, versus, waiting and doing them, um, you know, five or ten at a time. Also, you can get a teenager, you know, get a teenage girl for, gosh, if you pay her $10 an hour, that's far more than she's making, and $10 an hour in product only costs you $5 an hour. So, you know, she could, you get all the copies made or have her make copies. Um, you can um, have her put together 20, 30 hostess packets in an hour, and you are all set up and ready to go. Okay, so that covers our pre-profiling and our coaching, want to touch base on customer service because obviously if you're taking the time to establish these customers, we want to make sure that you're maintaining them. Um, with on your profile card, something that they check is how frequently they'd like to be contacted. And, you know, that's how you find out. How do your customers want to be taken care of? You ask them, you know, how do you want to be taken care of? What's your preference? Some people want to be called every payday. Some people don't want to be called. They just want to get the lookbook quarterly and they want to contact you. Some people just want to shop online. Some people, you know, want you to touch base with them after the lookbook comes in. Ask them how they want to be serviced. The Preferred Customer Program, PCP, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. You cannot take care of your customers more professionally and less expensively than Mary Kay Cosmetics does it for you. You can go online. I think new consultants get some um, free um, customer um, lookbooks. And um, every once a quarter, so um, May 15th, we was the deadline for the summer lookbook. August 15th will be the deadline for the September lookbook, which is our Christmas promotion. November 15th will be the deadline for the um, December 
um, which will be the winter lookbook. You can always see the PCP deadlines on InTouch. There is preferred customer program. There are mailings monthly that can go out. But the one that I suggest being a non-negotiable is the, the one that comes out once a quarter, and it's the lookbook, and you always order it the month prior to a new order form coming out. People who participate, consultants who participate in the preferred customer program, um, meaning that you, you know, are having your customers receive a lookbook, um, you put your customer's name, address, phone number in, the company sends them for 60 cents, or if the price has changed, it's right around there, a lookbook that has... It says, hi Susie, this is Dawn with Mary Kay, here's a new product, there's generally product samples in it, um, can't wait to show you our new line, when you make a $40 purchase, you get a free gift with purchase. You guys, it costs, in some places, over a dollar to mail a lookbook with postage, and the lookbook itself, so, you know, between over a dollar and postage, and then the cost of the lookbook from buying it from the company, it's well over, it's like a dollar twenty-five, dollar fifty a piece, and you're paying, ha you know, less than half of that, 60 cents um, from the company for them to mail it to your customers. It has your phone number, your website on it, and then the company sends you one so you know when to follow up. They give you suggested dialoguing. Um, so what I would generally do is I would get my customers in the habit of everyone would get a lookbook and then I would do an open house every time new products came out. So my customers just got used to it the end of June, the end of September, the end of December, um, etc. So the end of March and I would have the new products out because when you participate in the preferred customer program, you get to order the new products first. So for instance, in June, June 15th, the new order, the new products were available, but the people who participated in the previous preferred customer program, they got to order by June 10th. So in September 15th, the new order form will come out. People who do have done the summer preferred customer program, registered by August 15th, they'll get to order the new products by September 10th. That's a huge advantage, being able to order new products five days early. It may not sound like a big deal, but it is, especially when limited edition products sell out. You get to order the products to have them there when your customers get their lookbook. And you don't take the chance of stuff being sold out when you get to order at the beginning. You know, for instance, when we order Christmas products, you're ordering them in September, and you need to have enough limited edition to take you through December 24th. People are not going to trade Christmas products with you in November because people make a lot of purchases that last week before Christmas, especially men. So on December 25th, someone may, you know, trade out or give you a Christmas um, product that you need, but you shouldn't even ask that, you know, because you didn't, you know, um, stock up on products, you can always liquidate them after the holiday. You know, gosh, you run 40 or 50 percent off on Mary Kay products, you can always liquidate them. What I would do is I'd have an open house at the beginning of each quarter that my customers, you know, it would be Friday night or Saturday. I would have specific times and I'd set up a time for them to come. And so, you know, they knew that they could come from, you know, after work from 5 to 9 on Friday night and I'd say, which is best for you because I want to make sure that I can spend time with you. So they had a specific time to come because that increases the likelihood that they are going to come versus an a open, open house. You're, um, uh, counts are much lower um, because there's no obligation there. There's no, you know, commitment to it really. And I would have the new products out that they can test. Um, people do, can do their reorders then once a quarter from you. And then I'd always have a sale section and that would be the previous quarters, limited edition products, and I'd liquidate it. And I'd say anyone that made a $40 or more purchase, they get to shop off for my half off section. You know, so I will liquidate all the stuff from the previous quarter so I can use those dollars in the new quarter. Just a suggestion. It depends how you want to do that. But your customers then get the lookbook and then you can follow up. You don't have to do an open house. You can follow up with the phone call with them. You can, you know, do, um, just stop by and show them products. You can, you know, just call them on the phone depending on how they want to be serviced. But the preferred customer program is something that makes um, keeping um, track of your customers and good customer service, um, you know, um, at the forefront of your business.
The number one complaint of a Mary Kay customer is they don't hear from their consultants enough. I hear consultants say, well, I don't want to bug them, but then we hear customers say that they're not hearing from their consultants enough. So we don't want your customers dealing with someone else or find, hearing that it's easier. You know, we started um, giving consultants leads who were star consultants and had websites because we were hearing through marketing research that Mary Kay was starting to be perceived as exclusive. And exclusive in the sense that customers couldn't find it. That means they couldn't find a consultant who had products on hand. So it was easier for them to buy brand X at the mall when they went out shopping over the weekend than it was to get Mary Kay products. And you guys, that's no way for us to stay number one. That's no way for us to, you know, be, uh, have the number one, you know, customer um, loyalty in the cosmetic industry and number three in the, you know, consumer brand market in the United States. If we want to keep this position, we have to be servicing our customers, having products on hand and giving, um, um, excellent um, customer service and I think the PCP program preferred customer um, program helps you do that and um, allows you to um, four times a year show our new products to our customers keep them up on the new trends the lookbook is like a little magazine it directs them to the website it gives them enough information so that they can feel like they're staying on top of everything that they need to know about skin care and color and image and style um, for that quarter and you then will become an indispensable resource to them so you know, we're, we're investing this time in um, doing these 12 months of consecutive power starts or 12 months of consecutive perfect starts, depending on what level you want to work your business. What we also want to keep an eye on is making sure that um, we are maintaining the customers and giving them the high quality customer service that they deserve. Because if everyone has a sign around their neck saying, make me feel important, and we're truly operating our business on the golden rule, treating other people how we want to be treated ourselves, then, you know, taking um, excellent care of our customers is um, all part of that. So... That just gives you some tips on the preferred customer program for the gift with purchase that you give them on section two. Every order form, there is a new um, gift with purchase offer. It's usually in a box of five that you pay $20 for five mini mineral powder eye sets. They come to like $4.50 a piece. And that is for your reorder customers. Um, that is not something you need to offer your people at your skincare classes and facials. This is just for the people who get the lookbook from you and are offered that gift with purchase. Just a little tip, side note. On your website, you get to pick if you want to offer a gift with purchase. I don't. And this is just a matter of opinion. But if someone's going to your website to order, if they're getting my lookbook, then they know they're getting a gift with purchase. I'm giving them one. But if I have someone that's just referred to me, I don't feel like I need to give them a gift to make a $40 purchase or more. They, they want a Mary Kay purchase. They want a Mary Kay consultant. They've gone online to ask for one. Or at my classes, I'm giving, you'll hear in the last um, session of boot camp closing, I'm giving specials for them to buy in sets at my classes so I don't the additional gift with purchase with a $40 purchase or more is not part of that that is a promotion for reorder customers of mine who are on my PCP promotion so I do not advertise that on my website um, because my website is servicing lots of different people you know for instance if I have a hostess who's getting outside orders she can refer people to my website because they could be anywhere in the country then I don't need to give those people a gift with purchase because I'm giving the hostess credit on that. So that is just a little side note. I would not put that on your website. Um, those, the gift with purchases are reserved for your um, customers who are getting your lookbook and it's a matter of generating um, reorders um, for you. That's what you're giving them the products for and the um, lookbook and the PCP program is making sure that you stay on track, that once a quarter you're in front of and giving um, yourself an opportunity to service those customers how you want to be serviced yourself. Okay, this now concludes our pre-profiling, coaching, and um, customer service section. We will move on to skincare class procedure next.